There are many kinds of VTubers, and if you're a beginner and you've done any bit of research, you may have found yourself scratching your head and wondering where you should start. All these terms are thrown around like 3D VTubers to PNG tubers and even advanced PNG tubing, full live 2D models, and so much more. There are way too many options. As a beginner, where do you start? I came across a new style of VTuber on Etsy that was kind of a mishmash of a 2D model and an advanced model. I thought this would be a perfect way to introduce someone to a higher quality model while avoiding being overwhelmed by putting together something that takes a lot more time and knowledge. Introducing advanced PNG Tuber Plus but not a full model. Uh, just kidding. Let's just call this a beginner live 2D model. Sit back, relax, and grab your favorite cup of tea and get ready to enjoy this four part series with me. That will take you about only an hour to get through. Chapter one will be collecting references and creating a mood board. So first, let's talk a little bit about collecting references. What sites should you collect references from? My two favorites personally are Pinterest, of course, as well as ArtStation. There are many more out there that you can find depending on your preferences and the kind of art style that you enjoy. These are my go-tos for searching for reference photos. Now the little black square you see here, I am using a program called PureF, which is where you can stack and save your artwork on top of. You can easily move artwork around, flip the image, resize it. It's super convenient and you can also set the settings up so that it overlays on top of whatever drawing program you're using or whatever window you're clicking on, which as you can imagine is super helpful for drawing programs because when you are on a drawing program, it's usually the most front window, but PureRef allows your references to stick right next to you while you're drawing. So this is definitely one of my favorites that you can download for free or of course support the creator. And then next I'm gonna be showing you Milanote and we're gonna go over that together to have an even more structured reference plan and mood board. So Next, you're going to establish your style guide in Milanote. So here's Milanote. It's a super intuitive program where you have a toolbar on the left side. You can click and drag notes out, edit the text. It's very beautiful. It's a great way to get designed format very quickly, which is why it's one of my favorites. So what I did here was after collecting my reference photos, I started to put together a style guide to hone in even more. When you collect a ton of reference photos, sometimes it can get all jumbled up and you have all these different pictures, but you don't really know what you're gonna get from each one of them. So I try to make that more specific here with our style guide. So the main reference and inspiration that I had was this character I found that was posted by Otaku Vibe Studio on Pinterest. And what I really liked from this work was the way the line art had this thin black outline with a little bit of white. And I also liked the coloring a lot too. And when I realized I liked the colors, I tried to dissect what made it the way it was. So I made some notes like a solid color would get put down first, and then I'd place shapes for darker colors and do a more cell shaded look since this is very cell shaded for the shadows. There's very very solid shapes for the highlight, which is pretty different from the normal highlights that I make. If you see my VTuber model here, my highlights are a little bit more painterly, so this was a bit of a different angle. And this model does have some painterly moments, like the chest bone here looks a little bit painterly to me, as well as if you hold control on your keyboard and zoom in, I can see a little bit what looks to be a little bit painterly around the eyelids. So that was some dissection that I did for this first reference as I wanted it to be my main sort of direction. Found some other pieces of art that I wanted to take some notes from to be able to possibly pull from as well down here. So number one is choosing your main reference and then number two is going to be choosing a pose. So I found a pose that I really like, but for this I wanted to show a little bit more of the bust or the chest but this is the main pose for the upper part of the body that I went with. So after doing the pose guide, the next guide you can do is a design guide. For me, I wanted to knock out what the hairstyle would look like. So I really liked this shoulder length here, as well as some bangs and some longer pieces. So I did something similar, of course, but not exactly the same. Next for VTubers, if you wanna make an animal character, choosing what kind of animal is pretty critical. So I chose a fox girl and found some pictures that gave me examples of fox ears that I can work off of. Although I do realize this is a cat girl, but her her ears are very pointy and almost fox-like, so it's okay to mix a little bit sometimes too if you are making that as a specific design choice. 
And then next, choosing the outfit, I wanted to do possibly a corset with a bow or do sort of a simple top. I chose a bunch of different ideas here. And in my sketches, I actually did end up exploring this version, this version, as well as this version. And I ended up going with something more like this because it just seemed like it fit the aesthetic I was going for better. And for the hair, I also chose to go with a multicolored look. So I grabbed some references of what multicolor might look like. Here's some examples of the sketches that I ended up having with those three different outfits that I mentioned. So here's the corset with the bow. There was that kind of loose sweater. And here's one that I ended up going with. So you can see how this character really started to represent these different elements that I was talking about. This is an early version of the sketch, but this is the style I'll be going for when I color. I have the pose here. I have the hairstyle that took some heavy inspiration and some of those fox girl ears. And now that you've established your style guide in Milano, you can move into an art program to be able to start working on your sketches. Next, let's go over what kinds of art programs you can use when rigging a model for Live 2D, which will bring us to chapter two. Creating a model, compatible drawing apps, and tips and tricks when designing a model. Some of the compatible art programs are Adobe Photoshop, which is what I am going to be using in this video. Some more examples are Clip Studio Paint, Crito, which is a great free option if you're looking for a free program, Paint Tool Sci, and if you're an iPad user, of course Procreate, but you will end up using Live 2D on your computer. Something I do want to mention is that Photoshop and Clip Studio Paint are actually the two art apps that are fully supported by Live 2D Cubism, while other apps might require some troubleshooting. Another common issue that's reported from Procreate users is that there is this invisible layer boundary around the canvas, which makes things a little bit harder in Live 2D Cubism later down the line. So if you're a Procreate user, make sure to look out for that. A solution that I've seen and heard about is with Clip Studio Paint, I'm going to be doing it with Photoshop. You'll want to crop your canvas to help avoid some of the issues you might run into with CSP. So I'm just going to crop the edges just like this, and then we hit enter, and then we can send it over like that. And of course, if you don't see your art program here in this list, you can look it up to see if you can export it as a PSD file is the key. Make sure you could export it as a PSD. You could even make a few layers of random things and test upload it to Live 2D, which you'll be able to learn how to import your model into Live 2D in my second episode in this series. And you could do a test upload to Live 2D Cubism to see if it works before committing to a whole art piece. We're going to keep revisiting this document that you see here. And if you join my Discord and scroll down, you'll be able to find the SIA YouTube handouts, which is where this will be. And also if you scroll up a little bit, you will be able to find a list I started putting together as well that talks about art programs you can use to make art for live 2D cubism. So here's a few more in here that you may not have seen on the other list. And we're back to our handy dandy Google doc. So here's some tips for drawing your model for live 2D cubism. So first is separate layers. When you're drawing your model, try to use as many layers as possible. I am not super good at this as I'm usually drawing in a super painterly style, but for this one, I actually made a more of a cell shaded character. So it was a lot easier, but we will be cutting up the layers at the end. So if you don't want to worry about keeping things on too many separate layers, you don't have to super worry very much about that right now, because I will talk to you about what you need to have for your layers a little bit later. So if you just want to make sure you're getting the drawing done and focusing on that, we can focus on the layers later. But do keep this in mind if you're trying to save some time in the later end of setting up your model. Next is to name your layers clearly. So you can name your layers with an underscore for a space between big words. And when you're doing left, you could use just an L when you're using right, you can use just an R or you can write out the whole word. It really depends on whatever naming system you want to use. It doesn't actually matter for live 2D cubism. Next, we'll talk about the symmetry. So you might want to use the symmetry tool if you're doing a straight on shot of your model. It'll help create balanced features. So one eye is not looking small or awkward. We all know how hard it is to draw the other eye. And then you can tweak little parts for uniqueness if it's looking a little bit too symmetrical. Next, resolution super important. So you can work on a 3000 to 5000 pixel canvas for crisp details and 300 DPI. Usually 72 DPI is what's used for digital screens. 300 is usually used if you're getting something printed. I like using 300 anyways. If you have the extra space on your computer, you might as well, because who knows, you might want to use this model for merch and you don't want it to be 72 DPI if you end up doing that. Next is layer folder. So grouping layers, keeping everything organized, which I have a whole system down here. You'll be able to follow very easily. Next, high contrast around the face. So focus on high contrast where you want the viewer to be looking. Try to avoid weird high contrast around like an ear of your character or a piece of hair and you can do that by changing your drawing to black and white to see where the heaviest contrast is. Keep that in mind when coloring your VTuber. All right so these are a lot of great helpful starter tips. 
Now, if you wanna see an actual how I drew this 2D model behind the scenes, drop a comment below because I can do a speed paint and talk a little bit more about my process. But moving forward from that, I'm just gonna hop and cut right to when we finish the art and start talking about how you cut up the layers. Here is cutting up the layers for Live 2D Cubism chapter three. So now that you've drawn your character, we're gonna be hopping into splitting up the layers. Now, I add this part a little bit later because managing this while you're drawing can become a nightmare. And the key here is that these highlighted colors are going to represent the folders and then these bullet points are going to represent the name of the layer. So these are layers, these are folders. Your folders are just to help keep you organized in your art program. First we're going to go over the ears. So this is all layered in the exact order that I have it in my Photoshop document. So let's go ahead and open this and look at ears. So I'm going to drop down the ears. You can color co code your folders like mine. You can right click and click color and that's how I did that. So for the ears, I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart and you can see you want to basically take a lasso tool. So L on my keyboard for lasso tool and separate the ear. There is a little bit of messiness around the edges here that you can clean up. Uh, th since this is kind of a quicker like test model for me, I'm just going to leave it for the purposes of this demo, but definitely make things as clean as you possibly can. If with a more complex live 2D model, something we would actually be doing so you have a little bit of a better idea is extending the part of the ear to be even bigger underneath. So we'd want this to almost be like a whole entire asset because with a more complex model, something you're going to be doing is moving the asset around in these different kind of locations. So this is not happening in this model that we're making since this is a very simplified version to learn live 2D. So normally we would have the ear actually behind the head, something like this. And when the head goes down, if she was making an expression where she was sad or something like that, we would want this part to be fully drawn out, right? So when you're starting to learn in Live 2D, a good rule of thumb and the best habit to get into is drawing full assets where you can see, what I like to call it is you can see the unseen, right? It's something you wouldn't normally see if you're just an illustrator. You don't need to draw the back of that ear, but when it comes to rigging something, you do need to be able to see all those different parts because you're going to be moving it and weaving it. But for this simple, simplified version, we're not going to need that. So here is the left ear and here is the right ear and it, ooh, it looks like we have some weird fragments. So I'm actually glad that I grabbed this over here. All right, now that I fixed those ears up, you'll separate them into ear L and ear R in the layers. So you can see here, ear R, it's going to be her right, R left, her right, and we're going to do that system for the entire model. Okay, next is the hair. So we're going to go ahead and split the hair into the bow. So again, normally you draw the whole part of that ear in a traditional model, but we don't need to for this one. The clips are separated and the hair is one whole big piece. In a more advanced model, you'd separate each part like the different bangs and the different strands of hair. But in this case, we can draw the whole hair. Next, let's take a look at mouth. And I'll just go ahead and open hair there so you can still see it. So for mouth, we're going to make sure we separate the liner this is where it's a bit more crucial. So separate your line art, separate the tongue. So we got this, the line art, the back of the mouth and the teeth. Okay. So we'll have those four different pieces, which is pretty traditional as well for a more advanced model. Next we have the eyes. So for the highlights and the eyelashes, this is where it's going to be probably the most complicated for this model since we're doing a full level of blinking. So I'm going to go ahead and open eyes and you can see I have two micro folders here, L I L I R. And I'm just going to open one of these and we'll just go through one of the eyes. So we're just going to go over over her right eye for an example. So I have the top eyeliner and each lash is separated into a different piece as well as the bottom eyeliner. So here's all my different pieces here that you can see. And then she'll also have the eye white, which is separated and any highlights you have. So I only have one big highlight in this case. If you have multiple, make sure they're on their own layer. And then the whole iris can be one whole piece. Now, something to keep in mind is you want to kind of move this around to see what it's going to look like when she's looking left, right. So there's a good rule of thumb of something you can do to see what that's starting to look like. Make sure you put it back to where it's supposed to be when it's done. Okay, so we'll close that. Next we have eyebrow, simple, very simple. And I'm actually just noticed we're gonna move these on top of the hair because they're hiding behind the hair right now. I actually want them to be on top for this style of VTuber. So now we have the left eyebrow, right eyebrow. You can put the line art and the color, everything together for that. And then finally we have the head, which has the shadow, the line art and the blush all on one. We're not gonna be, too, be doing too much in depth animating. So that will work for that. And then for the body, I'm doing the entire 
entire body on one layer. I'm not even separating the shirt and the bow. On a more advanced model, you'd separate each piece like this bell, this bow, the shirt. You would possibly even have the bobas fully drawn out because you might have an outfit toggle switch or something like that. So again, this simplified model, we pretty much just have everything on the body in one whole layer there. And you see those gaps there? We're not going to worry about that because I'm not going to be animating these individual strands for this model. And there's what you'll do to begin cutting up your VTuber model. If you have any questions or confused, please drop a comment down below so I can help you out. All right, so now we're going to export our model to get it ready for live 2D cubism. So we'll go up to file and you'll go save as and you want to save it as a PSD file dot P as in Parker, S as in sanitary and D as in dog. No matter what drawing program you're using with that list I mentioned earlier and like I said, looking up to see if it can export this way, go ahead and save that out in a place you'll remember and we'll have that ready for the beginning of the next video. Congratulations, you're already crushing it. Let's keep this momentum going by setting up your VTuber in the next video with video 204.